The Luftwaffe's Dornier DO-335 fighter was so fast that German aviators nicknamed it the Pfeil, or Arrow. In fact, it was the fastest piston engine fighter of World War II. The DO-335 was a unique piece of German engineering that featured two engines with a distinctive push-pull configuration. Instead of placing both engines on the wings, one was located in the nose to pull the aircraft, while a second sat in the rear, pushing the plane. Although development began in 1937, it didn't see the light of day until 1944, one year before World War II reached its conclusion. Hitler hoped the Dornier DO-335 would change the war's tide, but it arrived too late to make any considerable dent in the by now overwhelming American and British air superiority. Only 48 aircraft were made. Most of them were destroyed or taken by the victorious Allied armies in 1945. Although it caused a sensation with American aviators for its innovative push-pull configuration, the Dornier was forgotten in an epoch where jet fighters became the future of air combat. Push-pull. After World War I concluded, the countries involved quickly realized how powerful and useful airplanes would become for future conflicts. The German High Command knew that if another war came to be, the chances of achieving victory likely laid with tank and aerial warfare. Through secret treaties signed in the 1930s with the rising Soviet Union, German engineers and aviators installed hidden military facilities deep in Russian territory to develop powerful new weapons. Tank and air combat tactics were taught to both German and Russian troops in war games. Prototypes of all sorts were evaluated. The Third Reich incentivized scientists and engineers to develop the latest technological innovations to push the country to a new epoch of social and intellectual prosperity. After researching a new type of aircraft configuration, German airplane designer Claudius Donier patented the push-pull engine layout for aircraft in 1937. This system was innovative because it offered the power of two engines, causing less drag and creating more effective maneuverability than other twin-engine configurations of its time. As the founder of the aircraft manufacturer Dornier Verga GmbH in 1914, Dornier was an authority in airplane development. His company rose to fame thanks to his manufacture of large, all-metal flying boats. He also designed the DO-17, a light bomber first used by the German Condor Legion in 1937 during the Spanish Civil War. Dornier based his push-pull configuration on the tandem engines and the extension shaft and pusher propeller used by his most successful flying boats, including the DOJ Wall and the DOX. He presented to the German Aviation Ministry the design of a high-speed bomber using his push-pull engine, but the project stalled until it was cancelled in early 1942. Although the Aviation Ministry was highly interested in his program, it was only looking to incorporate push-pull engines into seaplanes and heavy bombers. During those years, Dornier went on to develop other aircraft. It would not be until January 1943 when the Luftwaffe requested manufacturers to produce a Schnell bomber, or fast bomber, when Dornier submitted his design. His prototype P-231 won the competition, and he began working immediately on his aircraft. It was 1943, and the Germans began suffering their first losses in Africa and the Eastern Front. The Third Reich realized it had to find a way to end the war quickly, or the conflict would be lost. The Luftwaffe was optimistic for Dornier's design to gain the upper hand against the more numerous British Royal Air Force. Under its new codename, the DO-335 would become the foundation of the Dornier Arrow. The aircraft had to be completed in less than a year to not risk being cancelled by Hermann Göring himself. The mission profile also changed, as Germany required a multi-role aircraft that could perform heavy fighter and bomber roles. In the fall of 1943, the first prototype took flight. The aircraft proved to be very fast, agile, and easy to control. It was the miracle weapon that the military desperately needed to turn the tide. The aircraft had some unique innovations for its time. The most important one was that it featured two engines as part of the push-pull configuration, with one forward engine in the nose and another in a compartment in the rear. This gave the DO-335 better performance than other twin-engine designs because of lower aerodynamic drag due to the engine's inline alignment. This lets the airplane reach speeds of up to 763 kilometers per hour, with an estimated rate of climb of approximately 8,000 meters in under 15 minutes. Unlike conventional twin-engine aircraft with wing-mounted engines, 
The DO-335 would not yaw sharply to one side if one engine failed. This was thanks to the Daimler-Benz DB-603 V12 cylinder engines that Dornier chose to propel the DO-335. The DO-335 was equipped with one 70-round 30mm MK-103 cannon firing through the propeller hub and two 15mm MG-151-15 cannons with 200 rounds fired from the top cowling of the frontal engine. It had an internal bomb load capacity of 500 kilograms. Dornier's plane sat higher off the ground than other aircraft at the time to support the clearance of the large diameter propeller systems. The aircraft also featured a modern, retractable tricycle landing gear that was reinforced to support the two engines' increased weight and the all-metal heavy airframe. Other DO-335 innovations included an ejection seat for emergencies and a dorsal fin, which the pilot could jettison with explosive bolts to increase his chances of bailing out successfully. In case of an unexpected wheels-up landing, the ventral fin could also be jettisoned. Following initial testing, the German Aviation Ministry ordered 14 prototypes, 10 pre-production aircraft, with the suffix designation A0, 11 production A1 single-seat aircraft, and 3 A10 and A12 two-seat trainers. Performance and Tests German aviators liked the DO-335 for its excellent flight performance. It had a very controllable acceleration and turning radius, with easy handling that did not have any dangerous spin characteristics. However, the design was not without its faults. For a fighter bomber, the DO-335 was quite big and bulky, weighing 9,600 kilograms, which on occasions led to the landing gear not being capable of sustaining such weight. It was tall enough that a person could walk beneath it. Additionally, although it was easy to control, some test pilots reported that it was difficult to fly because of the heavily restricted sight lines. Another complication for the DO's aviator was exiting the aircraft. Given that the rear-mounted engine was placed just behind the cockpit, if the pilot needed to safely eject, he had to jettison the tail fin and rear propeller, which could only be done with built-in explosives. Although Dornier redefined the ejection process, it was still a dangerous move for the pilot, because according to tests, some explosions would not detonate instantly. And for a pilot under attack aboard a burning aircraft, every second counted. Nevertheless, pilots were comfortable with the plane because of its handling and its hydraulic-boosted flight control system. The Beginning of the End Production of the DO-335 began in 1944, and only a total of 48 would be completed during World War II. All these planes would enter service late into the conflict, in January of 1945. Although praised for its velocity and weaponry, the DO-335 Arrow could not make any considerable change in favor of the Luftwaffe. The Third Reich would surrender almost five months later, in May 1945, when nothing could be done to put a stop to the Soviets on the Eastern Front and the American allies surrounding Berlin from the West. When the war ended, Dornier had more than 10 DO-335 Arrows under construction. In total, no more than 70 were produced. The Luftwaffe's plan was to have more than 300 airplanes by late 1945, Although some combat units received special pre-production aircraft about 10 months before the war ended, no pilots officially flew DO-335s in combat. French ace pilot Pierre Klosterman, however, claimed that he faced a file arrow in late April 1945. He told contemporaries that while leading a flight of four Hawker Tempests from No. 3 Squadron of the RAF over northern Germany, he came across an unidentified aircraft flying at tremendous speeds at treetop level. He tried to take down the enemy plane, but the German aircraft quickly reversed and changed course, evading them easily. Although two of Klosterman's aircraft tried to fire, they were rapidly outrun by the DO Arrow. When the war ended, Klosterman got the chance to physically watch one of the unfinished Arrows and pointed out that it was the same aircraft he encountered during his April mission. The Surviving Arrow In April 1945, the U.S. Army captured one of the aircraft after securing the Dornier plant in Oberpfaffenhofen, Germany. They were studied and tested before being shipped to the U.S. aboard the British HMS Reaper. It remained at the American Naval Air Station in Norfolk, and then it was donated in 1961 to the National Air and Space Museum in Suitland, Maryland. In 1974, the plane was sent back for restoration to the Dornier plant in Oberpfaffenhofen, where the U.S. had initially captured it. Quite ironically, some of the German engineers that had helped build it back in World War II were still working at the factory. 
They were moved when they saw the old aircraft return again to its home. During the inspection, engineers were surprised that the explosive devices used to blow off the dorsal fin and the rear propeller for the pilot to eject were still intact. After restorations, the DO-335 was exhibited in the Hanover Air Show and then moved to the Deutsches Museum in Munich, where it remained until 1986. It was then returned to the U.S. once again. It's the only Dornier DO-335 aero that exists today. The surviving aircraft were either destroyed or scrapped by the Allied countries after the war ended. The surviving DO aero can be appreciated in the collection of the Stephen F. Udvarhazy Center of the National Air and Space Museum. Its creator, Dornier, received a commendation from the German Society for Aeronautics and Astronautics in 1959 for his outstanding contribution to aerospace engineering. In 1987, he was inducted into the International Air and Space Hall of Fame at the San Diego, California Air and Space Museum. <laughs>